Hey guys, Kev here, <clears throat> and I want to do my full review on the Oaks Works Lantra EDX. So this came in and has absolutely blown me away. I love this knife, and I will definitely be picking one of these up on March 2nd. Ow. Uh, when they drop, what am I doing wrong here? What the hell was I doing? I don't know what I was doing. Weird. Poked myself. <laughs> um, so, this knife dropped, I'll say, because by the time this posts, it'll be passed. I'm going to try to post the unboxing that day, so you guys have notice, obviously. But for the review, I'm going to just post it on the normal schedule, which will be, you know... Uh, a couple weeks into March, probably. And I've had this for about a week. I normally don't take this long with knives. Um, but I truly love this knife. I have carried this knife uh, almost every day since it came in. I think I carried uh, a different knife for the NYCKS show. Um, I accidentally left this in my case in my truck. And I meant to bring it so people could check it out. Luckily, uh, only a couple of people asked and I had to just apologize or, you know, say we can check it out later when I get back to my truck. But, um, yeah, so I carried something else for that because I had the pony stout in my pocket and a couple of Devo things that I wanted to be able to show off. Um, but otherwise this thing has been in pocket nonstop and is an absolute pleasure to carry. It's an absolute pleasure to use. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to fidget with. It's a little bit different. It's something you have to get used to. Um, and once you do, it's awesome, honestly. Um, so we will talk about all that. Um, but let's start off with the usuals. Um, this guy is going to be somewhere around $330, $350 is my uh, guess. I think I was on the site earlier and it was listed at like $340. might depend on the inlay. I think there's one with micarta, one with standard carbon fiber, and then your fat carbons are going to cost more. This one's in purple haze fat carbon. There is a version in Arctic Storm fat carbon that has blue accents. And then I think there's a, don't hold me to this, but I think there's like a standard weave carbon fiber one. And then there's a micarta. That's what I think. I don't think any of them are like different blade finishes. I think they're all going to be this M390 uh, in a belt satin here with a horizontal there. I should probably clean the blade. I haven't done that. Um, and I've used it quite a bit. I've cut through some tape. I've cut through a lot of stuff. So let's just clean this up. I meant to do that before. I think I did clean it once already. Uh, I did put, accidentally, put a chip in the clip. Um, this is kind of what happens if, you know, you send a knife out for a review. It tends to get beat up, you know, because you have, well, you have mistakes, which happen to anybody with any knife, right? Um, I think I got up and I bumped into a counter or something at work. And I took a little bit of a piece off of the clip right there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, where is it? No. There. See that? So, um, I do feel bad about that. I'll, I'll let Eric know and see what he says. But this is going to get passed around a little bit. So, my guess is he didn't expect to, like, get this back, you know, brand new and sell it or something. Um, he'd probably just use it for something or whatever. Plus, I plan on buying one, so if he wants me to just buy this one, I can do that. Um, it has a reversible clip, which is really cool. Um, I do find the angle of the clip a, a bit odd. I would prefer if it was, like, straight. Um, I don't know if that would... So if you put the clip straight here and then flip the knife over, I think it would still be relatively straight straight i don't know my brain sucks at this mirror thing but i think it would just be straight and straight versus angled and angled right but it might be a fits better in pocket thing i don't know um 
I do also find it interesting that there's a screw right here on this side. And then on this side, there's not. Um, so as far as I can tell, there is no screw on this side. This inlay is held in, is glued in. This inlay is glued in here and then screwed in here. I don't know. That is interesting. I don't know why I didn't notice that till now. Could be because of the frame lock and the relief cut and all that. They just couldn't risk gluing it and getting glue on the frame. Or I don't know why. But you do have quite a bit of hardware. You know, you have a pivot screw, a um, insert screw. That's going to be your uh, insert slash over travel. 90%. Yep. Over travel. You're going to have this screw for the inlay. You're going to have two body screws and an insert screw or a uh, filler tab screw. And then on this side, you have a screw for the clip. Um, and then you, ah, there we go. That's why, because it's a, they tried to make it a clean show side. Now, normally the clip would be over here, right? Let's show you how that works. Because I actually had a bit of a tough time reversing it because um, it is press fit kind of. And they actually have a separate filler tab for each side. So let's just show you. Grab a T8 here. So you want to take this screw out, which goes through. And luckily this came right out because I had already kind of done it. When they first come from factory, filler tabs and, oh, that was kind of loose. Uh, filler tabs and some other thing, inserts, stuff like that, they can be a little tight because, you know, they're kind of press fit. Maybe there's some oil kind of suctioning it in or something. Um, and you just have to kind of, you know, I had to put a, a piece of cloth in there, shove it through, and then pull back, and it popped out, you know. So you can flip this over. Let me just show you. And it seems like the clip does not want to fit. I thought almost the, that you needed a different clip for this side because I could not get that sucker to pop into this side. Um, now it does, but probably because I really, you know, got it in there. So she said... Lots of that's what she said on this channel, guys. So if you like that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, here's the long screw. So the way this works is you have a longer screw. It goes through the clip into the frame. Tighten that down. And then you have the insert. I believe it's this one because the screw is over there. So it should be this one. Oops, turn it around. You can see there's a little, uh, there we go, pops in, take your screw, drive it in, okay, and then this is your lock side washer for reversing clip to lefty carry. So that's awesome that that comes with the knife. You also get a nice pouch and you get a nice box and you get a cloth and you get a sticker and stuff. It's really nice. They did a great job with that. Uh, let me just show you now. This is the show side. So now you have this one screw that's very nicely, you know, tucked down or flush and you know, it sticks a little bit. And then you have that uh, filler tab. That's the way to go. I mean, the filler tab is hard to see, you know. Um, no screw here. So I think that's why they did that. And then on this side, they used a screw because it was safer. And it didn't matter anyway because you have, you know, hardware over here. But this hardware goes doot doot into this side. So um, I have not taken this knife apart. Um, that's not what I do with, you know, a loaner from a company like that. Unless they, you know, unless it's my knife or they tell me to. But as you can see... This is a longer screw, so it goes through the frame on this side, through the backspacer, and then there's threads on the titanium um, on the other side. So let me just... And there we go. And that tightens in. Because of the contouring on the scales, um, they use the same screw length for this one and this one. And um, because of the contouring and the, the thickness, uh, it's a thinner handle back here. Be, uh, so this screw is sticking out a little bit more than that screw. That's my take on that. 
um, why that screw sticks up a little bit. But anyway, this is the way the clip looks stock. It is on an angle. Uh, I don't really know why. Um, it does. You can kind of flex it a little bit. But it, it is more flex than it is like wiggle, if that makes sense. Because it is nested into a pocket and then the screw goes in. I mean, it's pretty solid in there. It's not like going to pop out on you. And the clip works really well. I enjoyed it. Um, so, I don't know. I kind of jumped around a little bit there. But aesthetically... I really like the look of this knife, open for sure. I love the blade shape. It's got sort of a spear foot look to it. Um, that belt satin's really nice. I love the flats with the horizontal on it. You got this nice swedge right here. Excuse me, thumb studs are kind of far out um, and we'll talk about that. So you can see they are going to be in your cutting edge, um, cutting path, sorry. So in terms of the uh, plunge grind and everything, to me, it looks solid. Um, it looks like the plunge ends right about here. So you have about that much space. You can see it's a nice long choil. And I don't know if you can see it, but to me, it looks like that plunge ends right there. So you get about that much, which seems like plenty to me. And you get a uh, forward finger choil that's very comfortable in the hand. Um, it is a, a flat grind. But it's relatively tall. It's very sharp. I have had no trouble with this. Loved cutting with it. I've opened uh, quite a bit of Amazon packages with it. Um, cut a little bit of cardboard. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I cut a zip tie or two and some plastic wrap. Um, nothing crazy, but, you know, um, I did use it and enjoyed the shit out of it. Um, the tip is very... Um, good to work with because it has that slight sheep's foot to it it kind of comes down so when you get into this kind of pinch grip you can get to that tip pretty easy because it kind of hooks down at the end i don't know if you can see it um but it kind of hooks down so you get easy access to it it's not like a super low tip but um this is to me the beginning of awesome if that makes sense. Like a nice spear point with a bit of a downward is the beginning of like what I want. And then the lower the tip gets, the better. Kind of for me, right? Sometimes it can go too low, I guess. But um, like what am I carrying today? I'm carrying the pony stout, right? And this has a nice low tip. Um, there's, you know, ever so slight belly in this blade. But this is the kind of tip I want, right? I mean, that's why I designed it. Get your finger up here, and then you can, you know, use that tip. You can cut, do your utility cutting. Um, and this is similar. You know, you can get, you just have to lift up a little bit more, but not too much more. Um, size comparison, if you like, is right here. You guys don't have these yet, so kind of hard to compare them, but they are almost identical in size. So uh, the Pony is 2.9 inches on the blade length. So there you go on that. Um, we can compare it to, let's say, the Trevor Burger Urban. That is a 2.75 blade. Some of you guys might have gotten, received your Urban LCs, which is the same size. So this is very similar right there. Maybe it's more than 2.75. Maybe this one's 2.9 as well. Um, uh, the F5.5, yeah, 2.9, sorry, so I'd say this knife, uh, is right around 2.9 as well, so there's some comparisons, um, working our way down here, you have this really cool, uh, knurling type golf putter milling or whatever inside of this area here, I like that. Instead of adding another inlay, which would have been cool probably, but uh, I like that milling, looks good. Um, you do have the frame lock, uh, but it works, and we'll talk about that, but love the inlay. I like the clip, I just don't like the angle of the clip. I, it's My OCD wants it to be right here, but maybe it was for functional reasons it went where it did. Nice backspacer with some ribbing on it. So she said, <laughs> I don't know, that one didn't make sense. But then you got a lanyard hole right here. Um, you got some jimping up here. So you can get uh, stabby, stabby grip. Uh, lock bar access is phenomenal. It's not like crazy, 
Um, but it doesn't need to be. The way this knife is set up, it just works really well. Um, no problems there. We are dead centered down the line there. Dead nuts. You do have a front flipper tab that I wish had more jimping up and around. I've gotten used to it. It's not the worst thing. But um, definitely would be ideal to have one more jimp and then uh, one up around the top. Maybe two, honestly. It has this sort of interesting uh, design up here. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, but it works very well. And once you get used to the knife, it's phenomenal. Um, so that's really it aesthetically. I mean, the overall silhouette I like a lot. I don't love it closed, um, mainly because of that and the stud placement. It kind of throws things off for me. But it's not, like, terrible or anything. I just, it's not my favorite design closed, you know. But open, excellent. So we talked about ergonomics a bit already. It's just, oh man, it melts into your hand. It's not super thin, but it's not like thick by any means. It doesn't feel chunky. Um, but you can, you know, you can tell it's not a, a, a very thin knife, but it feels great in the hand. Fills my hand very well. Everything is nicely uh, contoured and chamfered and it just fits the hand really well. There's no sharp edges. There's nothing that's like making it uncomfortable for me um now i would always hold it choked up if you're one of those people who's weird and like likes holding your knife back here even when there's a perfectly good choil up here uh then yeah you might run out of room you know it's turning close to a three finger knife i can squeeze four on but i definitely want to be up here um and the type of cutting i do i never need to be back there you know i'm not in the uh you know, I'm not in the woods just smacking trees out of the way or anything. I don't know what you need this grip for. I use this. So, you know, um, but take that how you will. If you want to go to 7-Eleven on Friday night and have a little gas station Slurpee fight, this does work. It is very comfortable. You can do it like this and it will work. But, um, you know, either way works. Um, I would not, you know recommend you stab anything with this because you will slide right up onto that edge and it will suck but you know if you had to or whatever so those are the only two grips i would even contemplate using and i you know this one's a joke but um you know i like to show it this one's really comfortable so um to do uh carry is really good like i said the clip is phenomenal it reverses it, it's it's great uh, it really is. It's not heavy. It's not like light, but it's not heavy. Um, the form factor is really good because it's small. It's not thick. It's it's just a good carry. I mean, it doesn't sit uh, shallow or anything. You get enough to pull it out. Um, just a just a good one, really. Uh, cutting. We talked about that already. It's great. Um, I mean, there's really not much else for me to say. If you want an in depth cutting review go check out um i don't know i think neves did a review uh maybe stasa has done one those guys will do the cut tests for you or whatever and give you the nitty gritty on the choils and the plunges and all that shit i'll just give you the uh quick and dirty um i enjoy this pinch grip i enjoy this pinch grip i enjoy this grip right here it goes through material really well um the only thing you have to worry about is if you're somebody who's cutting a ton of cardboard or something on the thicker end and you're worried about having things in the path of the cutting edge these studs are well in the path of the cutting edge now how much does that matter i don't know it hasn't affected me in any sense so um you know i'd love to hear in the comments uh anybody who has experience with something like this and thinks that's an issue because i'd want to know with what and all of that um, because it's been a pleasure for me and my thumb is going to be right here anyway so you know am i not getting my thumb in the cutting pad i don't know um but anyway i wanted to mention that uh sounds The sounds are good. I would give them a 7 out of 10. So it's not like, you know, killing it, greatest sounds ever, you know. It's not like the FSD or something amazing like that. But it's definitely not a 5. It's not a 
average. It's fine. You know what I mean? It's not. It's a. It's good. I really enjoy it. Um, it definitely adds to the value of the knife, in my opinion. The acoustics are solid, um, but they're not like groundbreaking. So I hope that makes sense. Really love the acoustics. There is no milling internally except for a pocket up here on the inside. I don't know what you'll be able to see. See a little pocket down here. Right there. And then nothing there. And nothing there. Is there another pocket up here? Yep. Another pocket on this side up top. And then there's a... I don't know if it's a locator hole or what, but you see that hole right there and another one on the other side, but there's no reason for it really that I can see. Um, so my guess is it's a locating hole for, you know, the CNC machine or, or whatever, you know, however they do that mounting hole. <laughs> is that a thing? I don't know. Um, I love the finish on the titanium. It seems a little different than their normal bead blast, but it could be wrong. Uh, it's a little shinier. I don't know. It's probably just the contouring that changes that. Uh, but I like it. I like how that looks. I do really love the way Jack Wolf does their, uh, I think it's aluminum oxide blast. And I would like to see more knives with that. Um... Cutting carry sounds. Okay, action slash fidget factor. Uh, this is this knife shines for me in this category, but it is interesting. So I'm somebody who loves a good detent. You guys all know I want a crisp, um, snappy detent. I want to ride the brake and have the knife pop out and lock up, right? I don't want to have to do the work for the detent. Um, that was just, yeah, don't thumb flick it. Unless you're right-handed, then you can dump like this. Um, but Evo, or sorry, uh, F5.5, ride the brake, pop, right? Um, ride the brake, pop. That's just what I like. Um, a lot of people don't mind a weaker detent. This one doesn't come with a super snappy detent. You know, if you just kind of break it, it'll just lock up. Now, I did tune this, but I'm just using it as an example. And a lot of people don't mind, you know, just giving it a pop. That's what a lot of people are used to. They don't even think about what I'm talking about. They just fire it. And that's probably the way to go. You know, I'm a bit of a, a diva in that sense. Huh. There we go. Detent diva. But anyway, um, I think they tuned the detent for this front flipper. Because if it was any stronger, it would certainly hurt. Um, I can attest to that. But. There is a method to how to flick this knife. And once you understand it, it's money. But you have to get there, right? So if you flick it out like this, it feels like a super weak detent. It really does. Right? It feels like, what is going on here? I can't even, you know, flick this thing. Or I got to, like, really power it, right? But if you learn that what you need to do is flick straight up and you just flick like normal straight up, it fires and it's really satisfying. It pops, it locks up, it even makes the nice, you know, sounds and everything. Uh, but if you fire this way, it doesn't. It's just a, just a technique thing, honestly. And then the reverse flick is the same thing. Once you learn to just fire it straight instead of, out um and you saw there even going out i was able to to lock it up but to reliably have it feel snappy straight up um the cool thing about this because the detent isn't super strong again lefty straight up super satisfying flick really is because the detent's not super strong left-handed bang i can just rest anywhere i want right on that lock bar no problem kev fires so does that make me bias in some way does it make me like it more because left-handed i can just use it yes it does i'm sure it does so i would i would definitely watch somebody's video who's right-handed and get their uh perspective on this knife because you know maybe uh to them it's not as awesome because you know 
the D10 isn't that strong and you can fail at doing this. Um, I don't know. Uh, to me, it's awesome. I, I love the way it is. Yes, occasionally I will accidentally um, fire it the wrong way and it'll feel weak or I'll fail it, right? I'll do this or something. But most of the time, pow. And it really does feel like that. It feels like... Um, now, the placement of the thumb stud is, you know, it's going to be something that people don't like. And some people will like. It's just a matter of taste, right? Um, it is very low. That's just kind of the way I look at it. If you look at any other thumb stud knife, they're going to be higher up. Um, I'm not a big thumb stud guy, so I don't really have... Do I even have another thumb stud knife? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I have this one. And I have this one. Okay, I have a few. So you'll see, uh, it, relative to the pivot, the stud is close. Boom. Boom. This one's like down here. There's a bigger gap, right? So if I take um, a ruler, and I'm getting pretty in-depth here, but let's take a ruler. From here to the, from the middle of the stud to the middle of the pivot is three quarters of an inch, okay? On this one, middle of the stud, middle of the pivot, three quarters of an inch. This one, middle of the stud, just over three quarters of an inch. This one, we are over an inch. I mean, we are over an inch on that. Um, honestly, it's it's whatever that next notch is, an inch, inch and an eighth, or an inch and a sixteenth, or whatever. So it gives you less leverage, right? It gives you less leverage when you're closer to the pivot. The detent feels stronger. It's just it's just uh, engineering. It's just whatever you call it, physics. Closer to the pivot, stronger detent feel, because I guess there's less travel or resistance or something. I don't know. This one's super strong. Um, so not only does it make it feel like a, a, a weaker detent because of that, it's also tuned a certain way, but it's not tuned to be light. I will say that. It's not like a light detent, okay? Um, but it just has that feel because of where the uh, stud is. Um an example of this, a knife I don't have here, but that is very similar, is the uh, Luft Concepts AVNT. They have the hole that starts like down here and comes down to here. And if you flick that from anywhere from like halfway down the hole or lower, it's really hard to deploy because it, the detent just feels so weak. Um, so it's just something I wanted to point out that there's there's something there, right? But they did it on purpose for, I think, a couple of reasons. They had nowhere to put the stud. Um, they have this hump here, and that's where they have room to put the stud. You put the stud here, it, it's not going to have enough room before it gets to the spine. It could crack shit or whatever. I don't know. So there's that. And then um, it also, I think, for people who are not used to uh, flicking knives, it might actually be nice for them. Because what happens is... You hold the knife like this, and you 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 kind of gear up your thumb. You're kind of uh, getting in a firing position with your thumb, where I get a lot of power to flick with the thumb. Uh, when the stud is higher up, I don't have as much of that built-up energy because I'm not um, curling up my thumb as much. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but it's kind of the same for the reverse leg. You get a little more juice on it than you maybe would. Now, people who have you know done this for years, you just know how to how to do it and how to build up pressure and everything. But um, for new people, it might actually be nice to have this one. Another downside to it, though, is you kind of have to hold the knife down toward the bottom to get to it, right? You can't just hold it normal and fire it. It's a little awkward to do that. So there's uh, pros and cons to it, honestly. Um, so it's going to be up to you and what you think. I honestly thought it would be weird, but and it is different, but I love it. So I think it's cool and different, and that makes me enjoy that, right? Um, then you have the front flipper, which you can easily just pop 
like a front flipper, um, left-handed works as well. Um, you know, you just have to make sure you're lining it up. You get your finger or your thumb nice and locked in and then pop it. This is not one that you want to just, you know, willy nilly go for because you might slip over this and then, ugh, and then it'll hurt because they didn't jimp this area. The reach around you could do, but I don't know how to get my finger like out of the way. So I just suck at that. Um, so I tend to do the uh, front flip like this. I have been able to do the roll move, um, but it was like in my truck. Oh, there you go. Um, but it was like in my truck and it was just, I was in a good position for it. It's a little tougher. It's not something I'm good at. Um, now, yeah, so I, I don't know. I just suck at that. But I think if you're good at it, you would be able to. And I poked myself there. Um, I will note that on the drop, the action is really good. You can drop it to your nail and then smooth shake down. It really is buttery smooth. And that's without skips. I mean, I could put skips in here and it would be singing, I think. Um, very smooth action. You can also slow roll it out because of the way the detent and the stud is placed. Easy slow roll out. Um, I actually caught myself doing this a few times just for fun. Um, so you can do that. Um, so you have a lot of deployments here, you know, you have a lot of fun to be had. Uh, another downside is I did notice that occasionally I would shake it and it would bounce off. Um, and I would kind of have to shake it again. Like it would close and then pop up a little bit. I don't know why or what, but, um, now I can't repeat it for some reason. I don't know. All right, well, there you go. And I'll occasionally put my finger, I'll go to front flip, and I'm putting my finger, like, on the stud, I think, and that's why it's not popping open. Um, so you got to just keep your fingers clear. So um, I think in practice, this knife is super fun to fidget with. I've really enjoyed using it, playing with it, carrying it, all of those things. Um, there are some quirks to it, and that's really uh, up to you. I like most of the quirks, um, so you have to decide how much you do. Um, I love the chamfering here. It doesn't have a cutback really or anything. You got a little bit of room here, but my finger just kind of flies across it. Um, so in uh, conclusion, I'll say I love this knife. I think it's unique as hell. I think it's cool as hell. I think the action's really good. I think it's lefty friendly. Um, you know, I think it, you just have to take a minute to get used to the knife. And normally that's not something I like doing. You guys all know I say um, if I have to adjust to the knife, then I probably don't want that knife, right? Um, in this case, it's minor adjustments. And it's just such a good knife in general that I don't mind doing that. So it's an exception to that rule, I will say. And it's also very lefty friendly, which I appreciate. So um, I'm going to get this off to the next guy to check out. Um, you guys let me know if you have any questions or anything. Uh, and I will be happy to try and answer them or, you know, we can have Eric answer those. Um, I do want to note that Eric Oaks from Oaks Works is a really good dude. Um, I've enjoyed interacting with him and it's important to me that I like the people that, um, that I buy knives from and I do plan to buy one of these. So, um, there you have it. The Oaks Works Lantra. EDX. Let me know what you think. I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And these are available probably right now. I'm betting he bought enough to have them available for a little while. Hopefully there's still some on the site if you want one. And uh, I, I recommend it. I do. If you have the dough and you want to pick one up, they are made by Riot. I think I mentioned that at some point, but not sure. Um, very well made. So, love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.